From the Shepherdstown District in the race for the Jefferson County Commission, we now meet the two candidates, the Republican Kara Keyes. Good morning. Thank you for coming. Good morning. Thanks for having me. The Democrat Carrie Blessing. Good morning once again. Thank Good you. Good morning to you. Each of you will get an opportunity for an opening statement, one minute uh, or so, and then in, in reverse order, the uh, closing statement. In between, Steve Pearson, Bill Stubblefield, former president of the Berkeley County Commission, will have questions for the two of you. Please limit your responses to two minutes or less if you can. If either of you invokes the other person's name or a policy uh, that they have espoused, you have the right to a direct response at the conclusion of their sentence. For the first question, again, Mr. Pearson. Ah, are you opening statements? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm already skipping. I'm, I'm already out of order myself. <laughs> yes. Bang the gavel. Declare me out of order. I'm just going to yes. whack you with this. <laughs> <laughs> opening statement. I will start first with you, Kara. Good morning. Thanks for having uh, both of us today. So a little bit about me before we get into questions. My name is Kara Keyes, and I'm the Republican running for the Shepherdstown Magisterial District. As a reminder, all four have uh, all four uh, commission seats are up for vote for the entire county. So if you live in Jefferson County, you have the right to vote for all of us uh, this November 5th. A little bit about me. I married my high school sweetheart. I'm a classic, uh, classic Republican in that way. Uh, high school sweetheart. We have four young kids. Uh, got married at 21. Started having kids at 23, 24. Uh, they uh, go to public school. Two of them in Jefferson County, and I am a civic uh, leader in Shepherdstown. And I have done a lot of community service work. And the reason why I'm running is the amount of vitriol and um, lack of civility in our local uh, county has hurt Jefferson County residents. So I'm stepping up and putting myself out there and hoping that I can make a positive change on our community. Thank you. Thank you, Kara. Kerry? Good morning. Um, thank you to WRNR and TV10 for hosting. My name is Carrie Blessing. I'm a lifelong resident of Jefferson County, and I'm running for county commission because I believe in building a future that reflects the values of our community. My background in environmental biology and natural resource management has equipped me with the skills to approach the challenges of growth and development with sustainability in mind. Having managed a 26-acre park in Shepherdstown, I understand the importance of balancing diverse needs while protecting our natural resources. I'm a small business owner, mother, and lifelong volunteer. My dedication to public service extends beyond my professional life. I've been actively involved in my church and our local community club, working to give back to the county that has given me so much. If elected, I'll focus on transparent and accountable leadership, ensuring that the voices of our residents guide every decision. And together, we can address issues of growth, support for agriculture, economic development, and community services, while preserving the rural character and quality of life that makes Jefferson County special. Thank you. Thank you both. And now, Mr. Pearson, in the appropriate <laughs> order, the first question. All right. So thank you, ladies, for uh, coming today. Um, what specific role can the county commission play in supporting the growth of local employment opportunities and what types of businesses should the county be looking to attract here we'll start with Ms. well Blessing. yes i think that's a great question and i think it begins with addressing um, infrastructure needs and addressing the budget this is the foundation of economic development and attracting businesses bolstering tourism while supporting the residents that already live here um, I'd like to see more low-impact jobs come to the area, such as remote work, uh, things of that nature. Um, think 3D printing, manufacturing, that type of thing. Um, and I think we can do it, but we need to be able to offer services to attract these employers. Great. So we need a commercial tax base in order to pay for infrastructure. So as a Republican, I don't want our taxes raised. Uh, I want to stay competitive, bring the right businesses in. We need a diverse commercial tax base. So I would like to see federal agencies. I would like to see government contractors. I'd like to see a mix of retail commercial uses. Medical, we have a huge wait time in medical services. As a small business owner and someone who has hired employees I, in Jefferson County, I'm very proud of that and I hope to support other small businesses that like to step up. I would like to have better integration with JCDA to ensure that we have a strengthened workforce in our county. Thank you. Thank you. It's kind of a build up on that would be data centers, which are the kind of the vogue word, word in, uh, or businesses in uh, Northern Virginia. Uh, they do add greatly to the commercial tax base. They do not bring a lot of uh, employees, uh, employees. However, they make a great demand on both energy and water. 
can we afford to recruit the data centers? Who would you like to ask first? We'll start with uh, Carrie first. That's a really good question. Sure. I think one of the things that's been missing in our county is lack of transparency when we're making these big decisions. So before we change zoning ordinance surrounding data centers, I would like to institute public forums so we can hear from both sides of the spectrum so we can make informed decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Yeah, so this brings to mind um, the usage of, of water. Um, data centers use a whole lot of water when they're cooling these facilities. And um, frankly, I don't think it's inappropriate. I don't think it's appropriate at this time for Jefferson County, considering that we are in need of an updated groundwater assessment. Uh, one of the other things that's missing from the current comprehensive plan draft is acknowledging karst topography. Um, I, I think that that should be a guiding principle in any future development: is acknowledging that and where areas are at most risk. Um, having uh, special regulations in place for any development that would occur there. So um, we need to start from the ground up. Thank you. Mr. Pierce. Okay, I'll go back to a question we asked earlier. Looking forward to the next couple of years where the county is going to be updating its zoning ordinances, uh, do you think that the county needs a, to specify additional land uses that would be permitted in the, in the rural zone? And should any of those uses be allowed as uh, by right principle permitted, or should they all be conditional use? Ms. Blessing. Yes. Um, so in terms, of, in terms of changing rural zone uses, absolutely, they need to be conditional um, to ensure oversight. So I, I don't think. I mean, I would like to see what these suggested principal permitted uses might be, but I, I think for oversight and accountability, it should be conditional use only. So, are you talking about solar or zoning in general? Zoning in general. The oh. comprehensive plan well, specifies that we should be looking to add additional u land uses, and I'm just wondering, you know, do you think that's appropriate? And, uh, you know, the topic came up, as you're aware, at the Planning Commission, and should any of these uses be by right or principle, or should anything that we had add to the zoning be conditional? So a little bit of background about what I do for a living. I'm a commercial real estate appraiser, so I appraise commercial and conservation properties in three states. Uh, every zoning ordinance that I look at in every county in every state that has a zoning ordinance has permitted uses by right, so you cannot make everything a conditional use. Um, however, if there is something that's happening in our county, i.e. solar, that we'd like to scale back from a permitted use, that is something I am fully supportive of so that there could be increased oversight. I think it's really important when you're having people running for these offices, you have people with relevant experience. And something I'm bringing to the table is experience in land use. So this question, I think, showcases my skill sets exactly. We need to have people in here that can uh, look at our zoning ordinance, change it, modify it, and improve it. A strong zoning ordinance will be a stronger county. Thank you. Admiral? Okay. Uh, start with Ms. Blessing. Uh, what is your opinion of pilot and TIF programs? So um, from my understanding, uh, these have been used in Jefferson County as subsidizing um, development. And I don't agree with the way that they've been implemented. Um, you know, pilot programs, from what I understand about them, is just pushing off the funds that could be available to the county. Um, I would like to see these kinds of programs used rather than for developers, for farmers, for our horse industry, um, to support um, the, the business and the economy that, that gives Jefferson County its identity. Ms. Keyes? I think it depends on the business and the use. Uh, the pilot agreement for solar, Wild Hill, uh, a few months back came to the county commission. That was a 39-year tax um, incentive that we were giving potentially, which we voted down on from the county commission. Um, I would support their decision to turn that down. That didn't make financial sense. We weren't bringing business and growth to the county. But every type of business should be looked at differently. As, as a Republican who wants to expand our business commercial tax base, we have to look at everything independently and saying, cold statements like I am against TIFs or I'm against pilot is just saying that we're not open for business and that's not good for our county. 
Now, that 39-year, 36-year program you referred to was really out of the norm. That's on most mm-hmm. of the TIFs are a much a pilot rather much shorter period of time. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Mr. Pearson. Okay. Um, so in the past four years, there's obviously been a lot of turnover on the county commission, both on the elected officials, a couple of vacancies, and also the county staff. Um, what will you do to make sure that this chaos does not continue to start, Ms. Keyes? Well, I get made fun of a lot for this, and I bring this up at all the forums. I'm leading with civility, and I think that's so critically needed in our county right now. So common sense leadership, leading in civility. Um, There's been, if I think by the end of the year, there will be three positions just in our seat that will be filled. We are so busy fighting with each other that our county is going down the tubes. And who hurts Jefferson County residents? I am putting my ego aside. I can get attacked all day. I'm okay with that. If I'm doing what's right for the county, I will stay true to myself. I will stay professional, leave with civility, show up, do my votes, take a breath if I lose, and move on. I also think it's important to know that, um, you know, uh, throwing, slinging mud is never okay, and that's there's there's been way too much of that, and I'm I'm hoping to spark that change of positivity. That's possible. So, yeah, um, there has been a high turnover rate um, with county officials, and I would like to work closely with staff, um, you know, to to try to improve morale. Um, I think it's important to promote from within. You know, we've been looking for this county administrator, but we have we still have long term employees that are serving in county positions. Um, I think promotion within is a way to increase morale and also to improve consistency in the functions of county government. Um, Thank you. How would you balance the farmer's right to sell and the utilization of the land? This kind of implies a solar question here, Bill? Well, not necessarily. Solar certainly implies there, but it could be others as well. Uh, Ms. Keyes. Well, there's a lot we could do. Um, One of the things that immediately comes to mind is our lack of conservation programs in our state. That's not something that the County Commission has 100% purview over at all. We are just, uh, we would facilitate that. In other states, they have stronger programs of conservation easements, and that gives farmers the ability to conserve their properties, um, continue to farm for generations to come, and still be able to participate in tourism, agritourism opportunities within those conservation easements. So it depends on the easement. Um, That's one avenue I'd like to see strengthened. We have several great programs, farmland protection, um, that are throughout our county. But if if you were to compare to other states and other counties, we have much less land that we're preserving compared to other counties and other states. So that's something I'd like to see strengthened so that we're not forcing the hand of uh, farmers to develop their land for uses that are not cohesive to the surrounding land. Um, you know, solar industrial farming next to a one acre residential is not fair, you know, fair to everybody. And, and so we do need better options. Ms. Blessing? Yes, I agree. Um, you mentioned, uh, again, the tax abatement. And I think that we should be looking for ways to organize the farmers and the horse industry um, and to be able to offer them um, those types of, of breaks. Uh, they contribute to the local economy, and I'd like to see that um, increase uh, through ecotourism, agritourism, as well as the promotion of historical areas in the county, investing in initiatives such as integrating more locally grown foods into the economy. Um, we can think of innovative, innovative ways to support our farmers, uh, providing more facilities uh, for processing, um, for livestock trading, things of that nature. Um, And one of the other things that kind of touches on this is I would like to see a citizen's advisory board where you have folks from sectors such as farming, agriculture, um, you know, environmental folks and the like, small business owners, and have them really involved on some of the key and critical issues that are guiding the county. Thank you. Mr. Pierce. All right, time for one more. Um, A a quick question. Looking at the uh, across the county budget, you know, next year, what would be the one uh, item that you would uh, prioritize for increasing funding? And uh, I think we'll start with uh, Ms. Blessing. Try to limit your response to one minute. Okay. 
Um, I think it's important to address emergency services. Uh, Natalie Grantham mentioned the response times. Uh, they're pretty, they're pretty egregious uh, right now. So, you know, and also understanding what is the expansion of services going to look like for emergency services. I haven't heard anyone really talk about that, and the comprehensive plan doesn't provide a guide for that. Um, so, funding emergency services uh, through grants um, and various federal programs as well as understanding what the expansion should look like. The comprehensive plan has no legal authority over really any of these types of decisions. It's more of a goals and arbitrary thing, so I'd like to start with that um, clarification. Um, EMS I agree with, right? I've met with um, a few um, of the stations so far, and I've talked with them and their budget. Uh, Mike Mood in the audience, I talked with him when we were door knocking the other day uh, and other others as well. They fundraise for almost two-thirds of their annual budget. That doesn't make sense to me. I think the, the our volunteer um, firefighters and EMS, they should be focusing on saving lives, maybe fundraising for capital improvements, replacement reserves of vehicles, not their, their monthly budgets. I think that's something we should be, if we have the tax base and the taxes, um, the, the money set aside for the services, we should be giving them more money. We will move to closing statements now, and for the first closing statement, we begin with Carrie Blessing. So, as a lifelong resident of Jefferson County, this community is not just where I live. It's a part of who I am. My background in environmental biology and natural resource management has given me a deep understanding of the need to balance the growth with preser preservation and the importance of protecting our natural beauty and resources that define our county. My civic service through my work with both my church and my community club has further strengthened my commitment to serving the people of Jefferson County. I also bring on hands-on experience in managing complex projects and working with diverse stakeholders. In my role managing a 26-acre park in Shepherdstown, I've learned how to navigate policies and balance the needs of the community, environmental preservation, and various interest groups. This experience has taught me the importance of collaboration, finding common ground, and making thoughtful decisions that serve everyone. I believe in leadership that is driven by the voices of the community. I stand for transparency, accountability, and making decisions that reflect the best interests of all residents. If elected, I will be a commissioner who listens, who works collaboratively, and who ensures that we continue to build a Jefferson County we can all be proud of for generations to come. Vote blessing. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie Blessing. Carrie Keys. Thank you. I think it's great to have passion, and I'm leading with action on helping our county with relevant experience. I think it's really important when we're making these decisions on who to vote for is not just the party, but who is best suited for the job. So as a, an owner of a commercial real estate appraising business, I have no self-interest in this, but I have a deep understanding of land use and zoning ordinance, which is one of our two biggest problems hurting our county right now. I am a civic leader president. I have served in this organization for close to nine years. I have spent the past nine years about 25% of my work week volunteering. So I lead with action, I lead with integrity, and I will continue to do that in a civic platform. As a mom of four, um, I also want to increase our daycare resources and ensure that we have, we can close that gap of a nearly 900 uh, slot deficit in our county. So I will be working with many stakeholders. I will be leading with action, with civility. And if you want to vote for Kara Keys, um, you can learn more about me at um, vote. You can email me, vote Kara, uh, Commissioner Kara at gmail.com, or you can go on my website, which is votekarakeyscommissioner.com. So thank you so much, and I appreciate you. Thank you. Kara Keys, Carrie Blessing, thank you both so much for coming today. We thank appreciate you. your time.